If we go into a 2024 scenario where it's basically a redo Mm -hmm. of 2020 between Trump and Biden, what does that say? That we have nobody better than these two? And so an independent or somebody who is offering something in the middle, people are hungry for that. That is Senator Lisa Murkowski, a Republican senator who doesn't like the prospect of either Biden or Donald Trump becoming president again. But she does throw out an independent, a third option, which she defines as being someone in the middle in the way that people like her use that term, not the way a rational person would, but we'll get into that. She actually has an idea of who that should be. Watch this. Would you support him if he decided to run? I, I, I tell you. If it is, if it's a matchup between Biden and Trump, I know exactly where I'd go. I would go with, I would go with Joe Manchin. I am one who doesn't like to use my vote for the lesser of evils. I want to be proactive in who I think could do the job. How would you determine that that vote wouldn't send Trump back to the White House? I'd have to, I would really have to do some serious evaluation. And again, this is this is July of, of 2023, and who knows? Who knows what's going to happen in the months ahead? Um, uh, we just don't know. She doesn't know, of course, no one can know at this point, but she doesn't seem particularly troubled by it. I will say that the possibility of Joe Manchin running as a third party candidate under you know, the no labels party affiliation or whatever certainly could play a factor either nationally or in individual states. We really don't know. At this point, there's very limited polling, although polling that did just come out this week from Monmouth University shows that while Biden is currently beating in a two way matchup, Trump by seven points, once you throw Joe Manchin in, his lead over Trump drops to six points. It's only a one point difference. So at least as of right now, Joe Manchin does not seem to have a big effect on the race. I'm sure as the country gets to know him better, they'll be won over by his charisma and how how well he represents the average working man as all of us obviously feel towards him. But anyway, I just think it's ridiculous. Like throwing out a third party option, Totally understand it. There are people who like Lisa Murkowski are not happy with either of them. But the idea that simply because Joe Manchin isn't either of them, that means that he's in the center. I would ask in the center on what? Does he represent the vast bulk of the American population on the issue of abortion? One of the biggest issues of the last election on climate and the environment, on wages, labor. Where exactly does he represent the silent majority that's not being represented by the two major parties? So guys, I think this is one of the biggest deceptions in American political history. And it's not just about Joe Manchin and Murkowski. It's the idea that these politicians that the establishment media and and everyone else in the establishment in both political parties in Washington call moderate are actually moderate. They are not. They call them modern and centrist because they're at the center of Washington. But Washington is both corrupt, very much pro corporate, and also very right wing. So I talk about that in my upcoming book, Justice is Coming. And I show definitively how Washington DC is far more right wing than the rest of the country. And so they go, well, Manchin is in between Joe Biden and, and Donald Trump. That's not true on several levels. First of all, Joe Biden and Joe Manchin, are nearly indistinguishable. They, they have nearly identical records in the Senate. Then as President Joe Biden said, well, I'm much more left wing than guys like Joe Manchin. Now I will be a progressive. And he introduced a bunch of uh, policy proposals that actually did seem progressive. And then he didn't fight for any of them and he let them all die. And he passed a bunch of things that helped corporations. Some of them tangentially helped the American people, like you'll get more bridges and a little bit more internet access. So they weren't all bad, but they all go to corporations first. And then he gave Joe Manchin the Mountain Valley Pipeline. He allowed drilling in Alaska, all of these conservative positions that agree with Manchin. And then when it come to, came to progressive issues like paid family leave, higher minimum wage, public option. Some of them he threw off the plane immediately. As soon as he got in, did an interview on national television, said, "Oh, public, uh, the higher minimum wage is not going to happen." Public option, he didn't even propose. 
And they go, oh, Jake, you can't say he was lying about being in favor of the public option. He didn't even propose it. He didn't even try because he never meant it. He's still just as conservative as Joe Manchin. So the entire first two years Joe Biden's term was, Oh, golly gee, me and Joe Manchin happened to agree again. Oh, the only things that passed were the things that me and Joe Manchin agreed on for our entire careers. But you see how I'm so far to the left of Joe Manchin? No, I don't see it at all. Okay, so that leads us to the main deception. What the hell are you guys calling moderate? Joe Manchin's positions are deeply unpopular. The example I often use, but you could use dozens of examples. Paid family leave, polls at 84%. Joe Manchin is against it, so it didn't pass. Joe Biden's like, "Oh, Manchin's against it. Oh, golly gee, oh, I wish we had passed paid family leave, but with only 84% of Americans in favor of it, including 74% of Republicans, I just couldn't find a way to pass it." Right? No, that is not a moderate position. That is a radical. It's not even fair to call it a right wing position because the right wing agrees with us. <laughs> Three quarters of them do. It's a very pro corporate position, and yet they. Everyone in media says, and, and there's Murkowski, a so-called another moderate, in her case, a Republican, and all the press calls her on it. And they're all like, oh yeah, the moderate position is to be with 16% of Americans. <laughs> How could that possibly be true? No, they're all doing a mass lie to you guys. It is propaganda and brainwashing of extreme proportions. And unfortunately, they're so much more subtle than Fox News. They're so good at that propaganda. Paid family leave polls at 84, I told you. Minimum wage lifting it to $15 polls at around two thirds of Americans. The public option polls at 70%. I can give you dozens of more, and I do in my book, Justice is Coming. They're all intensely popular and hence moderate. But everyone in Washington, including all of the liars in mainstream media, go, no, those are radical left positions. The kind that Joe Biden has. <laughs> he doesn't have them and they're not radical left, they're moderate positions. And instead they take a radical right wing corporate person like Joe Manchin and they call him moderate. He is not the midpoint between Biden and Trump. And by the way, all three of the presidential candidates, if Manchin gets in, he's not in yet would be significantly more right wing than the average American, including Joe Biden. Yeah, I mean, that's it. Do not fall for the banana in the tailpipe, please. They, they, they are so far removed from what the everyday average American in this country wants and they don't care, they just don't care. I mean, Jink, you rattled off a list, I'm taking copious notes, crossing out stuff. Even if we just take the child tax credit, for example, Manchin didn't want it. So it got X, so a program that lifted children out of poverty was not extended because the shadow president Joe Manchin did not want it to be extended. Minimum wage not increased when the, the, the Democrats had control of both chambers of the United States Congress and the presidency. He didn't want to do away with the filibuster. He doesn't want to expand the court. You know, just gave a big speech about the affirmative, the United States Supreme Court striking down race-based affirmative action. But that's all he did. He's not taking any action to correct these things. So President Joseph Biden and Senator, AKA Shadow President Joe Manchin are in lockstep. And it is important that the American people understand that. Now, Senator Murkowski was beautiful. I mean, she sounds so reasonable. You know, I'm tired of, you know, I try not to vote for the lesser of the two evils. Well, why is the everyday American people always asked to vote for the lesser of the two evils? So it's not that she wasn't making good points, but don't look behind the curtain and see the wizard of, of the wizard behind the curtain. That is exactly what she is. That is exactly what no labels is. This is a flim flam sham that is trying to be run <laughs> against the American people. No difference, Jink, as you laid out between President. President Joe Biden and shadow president a mansion. Yeah, so and by the way, last thing on it, look at the infinite corporate greed. Uh, the super PAC for no labels is stuffed to the brim with corporate money. And so they're like, Biden, he proposed some bills we didn't like. I mean, he didn't try to pass them and he didn't pass them. But maybe we go with mansion who is 100% corrupt instead of this Biden guy who's walking around only 95% corrupt. And and then they figure, well, if Manchin costs Biden the election and Trump wins, maybe he'll give us another $2 trillion in tax cuts. So for them, 
They're like, win, win, win. It's just a question of how much they're gonna win. And that is a perfect summary of corruption in Washington.